about Section D so, and how you were treated. So this is your most dangerous criminals. Mm. You know, people so who Jacob was in there, was most in dangerous there with, criminal. Of course. You know, with criminals who are on trial for, when you were in remand, criminals who are tr on trial for murder, on trial for rape, armed robbery, those are the people that you would meet there. When I was at Chikurubi, I was in a, in a cell this size, probably 45 people in here, sleeping in here. And, you know, 10 of my inmates were saving life cellmates were saving life, about four were saving in over 106 years, I think two were 106, and then another one was 108, and then another one 116, I don't remember. And then the rest were saving an average of 30, 40 years. So in other words, you are still not tried, but those are your friends and colleagues that you're living with. Uh, when I was in that section, D of our prisons, um, the there are no toilets, for instance. There's no running water in the toilets. And um, you are locked up for 17 hours, and there's no toilet. So if somebody has an upset uh, tummy, then they have no toilets to use. For 17 hours that you are locked up, there is one toilet without water. And so what I saw prisoners end up doing is they would, at Harar remand, they would relieve themselves in lunch boxes, keep it. You know, wrap it nicely, put it in a plastic bag, and then they keep it for the next 16 or so hours until the following day when they can dispose of it. And, <clears throat> and um, you know, I saw food would be served. You know, there's a broken down sewage at the D section of Harare Remand Prison. There's a broken down sewage, and then they put food bins right in the midst of that sewage because there's nowhere else to do it. And then they are saving food under those conditions. These are things I, I, I never thought are still happening in this country. And um, I, we asked, you know, Hopewell and I asked over and over that, can't we get this sewage fixed? I even offered to actually speak to my lawyer so that they could raise people I knew who could come and fix the broken down sewage. And I wouldn't have minded to pay for it. They said, no, if you're a prisoner, you can't do that. So every effort we would try to solve and bring reprieve to the prisoners around those matters and issues, they were shot down. And it was so, it was so heartbreaking. I mean, I saw young people would be fighting for, for the toilet. Someone would say, please, I, want to, I need to just try to do something. And then someone says, you can't use the toilet because it would be stinging until the next day. And then there would be fight, fights around those matters when those facilities should be basic human rights. Mm. Every, every citizen should have a right to access to all those. And also their human rights should be respected. Do you, do you think this is done deliberately to ensure that you don't ever want to go there? Or this is total neglect? Both. One is total neglect and incompetence on the part of those running the prisons and the state in particular. And then secondly, it's also of course meant then to intimidate you. But of course, how can you mm. do that when you completely violate people's rights? Mm. And the other thing they would do, every time you go to court and you're coming back, they strip all the people who have gone to court naked. They just, they say we're searching for weapons and making sure that you have not acquired weapons when you went to the court and on your way back. And then they strip you naked, they ask you to jump with arms spread like this. That's dehumanizing, That's dehumanizing. Jacob. That's dehumanizing. And of course, uh, we refuse that. We refuse that ill treatment. But they would do it on prisoners. What, what, what do they do when you refused? They, are, they allowed you to not to uh, do it? Of course, it. they allowed us not to do it. But then they still go on to do it on the mm. other prisoners. Mm. And when you see fellow, you, fellow Zimbabweans going through that, it was so, it's one of the things that really frustrated me. It, it, um, at one time I was speaking with the officer in charge, you know, the officer in charge uh, um, Harare prison and also the one from Chikurubi, especially the one from Chikurubi. I was saying to him, you know what, your problem here is that you don't want to treat us as citizens because we're going through what we are going through. You appear to say, because you are suggesting and insinuating that, you know, we, we had lesser rights as citizens because we are going through this. Then I was telling him, you know what, my brother, we remain Zimbabweans no matter what. Everybody here at Chikurubi Maximum Prison remains Zimbabwean. Even when they are going to sit on the electric chair for execution, 
if their charge caused them to be executed, they remain in Zimbabwe until the last breath comes out of their mouth. And this is supposed to be correctional services. Exactly. But it's, it becomes a prison mm -hmm. where you have no rights. And the sleeping space, you have only 30 centimeters with the next person. Mm -hmm. You are so squeezed like rats. Mm -hmm. You know, there were lies. You know, we call that Tinder. You know, lots of them. And they would bite you all night. And the night is 17 hours. So, and I mean, fortunately for us, I mean, I grew up in the village and, and, and I've become so resistant and immune to those bites and I would mm. do my night sleep until the next day. But it was so bad. It was yeah. so bad. So the mm. conditions in those prisons were horrible, Trevor, I tell you. <laughs>